Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode. Today I want to talk to you about an amazing 4K video camera that costs less than £300. What is it? Well, you'll have to find out. Let's roll those titles. Hi everyone, so today we're going to take a look at an amazing 4K video camera that costs less than £300. It is the Panasonic Lumix GX80. It, this camera is an absolute beast. It is tiny, it can fit in the palm of your hand, but it can shoot 4K at 100 megabits per second. It has internal stabilisation and it just beggar's belief that something so small can pack such a punch. So without me rambling too much, let's jump straight in and see what this looks like to shoot with. So today I want to talk to you about the five things I absolutely love about this camera. There are many, many things that I love about this camera, but I'm going to try and break it down into five, okay? So the first thing I love about this camera is its size. It is tiny. If I take this lens off, you will see just how small this camera is. I compared this to the size of my iPhone yesterday, and this is about an inch shorter than the iPhone 6, which is pretty cool. So, really, really small. This camera is perfect if you're traveling or if you just wanna sling a camera in a bag um, and go traveling with it. It's really, 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 really nice. It's It doesn't have a large footprint, as I said, and so it just makes for really nice, discreet shooting. You could use it something like this on um, a documentary and it wouldn't, it wouldn't look too out of place. It, it almost it almost looks like a little point and shoot camera, but I don't want you to I don't want that to put you off. It has a really nice, um, quite shallow hand grip, but it's still quite usable, um, which makes it for really nice for handheld shooting. Which brings me nicely on to our next point, number two. Um, the second thing I absolutely love about this camera is the fact that it has inbuilt image stabilization or for short ibis this basically means that the sensor right in here is mounted on a five axis gimbal which basically means um, it is supported on five points around the sensor to compensate for the natural shake that happens when you hold the camera handheld i don't know if you're a bit like me but if I've not had a coffee in the morning and I go to hold a camera, I'm like, brrr, hands are shaking. So that's it's really, really good. So again, you know what I'm like. I don't like to bore you too much with my horrible voice. So what I like to do is give you lots of examples of how this thing works in action. So I'm gonna pop up some examples on the screen in a minute and you'll side by side and you'll be able to see what this camera performs like with and without stabilization. So let's look at that now.
So the third thing I love about this camera is the fact that it can shoot 4K at 100 megabits per second. To have a camera of this size that can shoot 4K at such a high data rate is absolutely brilliant. The 4K image is really, really sharp, really, really nice and crisp. What I absolutely love about shooting in 4K is that you have the opportunity to downscale it to 1080p, that way giving you a bit more room to change the horizon if you need to, if you've got a bit of a wonky tripod, that sort of thing. It's really, really nice. So the image from it looks really, really good. Um, and the fact that it shoots 100 megabits per second is really, really important. So the higher the bit rate, the more information the camera is storing for each particular frame. So that's really good for things like motion. So if you're shooting birds flying off, the higher the data rate, it, the, the better. So I used to own a first generation Mavic Pro, the DJI Mavic Pro and the first generation DJI Osmo. Now both of those cameras um, shot 4K at 60 megabits per second. And you could really notice the difference when you were shooting motion, uh, especially with a drone, you're obviously flying through the air, uh, the details in the things like the trees and stuff like that would just break apart because the camera isn't storing enough information for each particular frame that you're shooting. So uh, 100 megabits per second, 4K is absolutely sublime in a camera that is less than your iPhone. It is not less than your iPhone. In a camera that is smaller than your iPhone, which is really cool. So, moving swiftly on, the third, the fourth thing I really, really like about this camera is the fact that you can record HDMI out clean, okay? So I don't know if this is going to focus up properly. I apologize in advance. I might get a nice B-roll shot of it. No. But so this camera can record 4K out of the HDMI slot, which is really nice. And it's clean as well, so it doesn't come with the menu information as well. So this is perfect if you wanted to add a Atomos monitor to it, which is really good and um, any sort of 4K monitor, which is really good. And that opens the doors then for lots of possibilities with this camera. The biggest one being taking away the record limit of half an hour, which comes with these cameras. Um, it's a silly rule, but I don't make the rules. Um, so it, at the moment, it only records about 30 minutes, I think, um, in one take. Um, so it, attaching an external monitor is perfect because then you don't have that that sort of time limit. So if you're shooting things like a wedding and if you've got a really long ceremony or if you're shooting things like a conference or something like that, it's perfect so that you don't have to keep pressing stop and record all the time, okay? So that's really nice. I've used this camera before with a Blackmagic Design Video Assist and the Video Assist 4K and it was just sublime it took the image straight from the sensor and to have that in a camera of this size is really really nice um, to have that ability to to monitor and to record externally as well which is really good so a lot of the atomos monitors i've used with this camera can sh the shoot prores as well so it shoots a much better uh, video format that is actually in the camera so that's really nice so and finally the fifth <laughs> the fifth thing I absolutely love about this camera is the price. So, as I said in the beginning, it's um, three, £300. That is obviously used. Um, I do need to make that clear. But um, MBP, I've got this on at the moment for, for £295 in a like new condition. Bit of a disclaimer, MBP aren't paying me to say this, nor do they even know that I've said this, but I use them a lot, so there are probably lots of other um, read, second-hand camera retailers on the on the interweb. So if you have a look, then I'm sure you'll find more, but um, MP, MPB has this at the moment for £300, and it is just sublime. For £300, you get 4K imaging, 
um, you get 100 megabits per second data rate. You get other frame rates in HD, for example, so you get 50 frames a second in full HD, which is amazing for slow-mo, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, and when you, what I forgot to tell you before, is when you couple this camera with a stabilized native lens, for example, this lens, the 42.5 millimeter 1.7, which is a really, really nice lens. So if you pair that together, you are basically getting two lots of stabilization. So you're getting the in-body stabilization and you're getting the lens stabilization. So this is gonna be absolutely rock solid when you are shooting, which is great. So that's my um, very, very, very quick rundown of the five things I absolutely love about this camera. Just going to talk very, very briefly about things that I'm not a big fan of, and they're going to be very brief because there aren't a lot. One thing most video enthusiasts will notice is that this camera does not have a audio input. So you cannot plug a microphone into this camera, which is a bit of a shame, but I don't tend to use a lot of onboard microphones simply because of the amperage inside the actual cameras themselves are pretty poor, so I tend to shoot a lot of things externally anyway. Um, so it's not a, a not a big, not a very big sort of game changer for me, if I'm being totally honest. But I know for a couple of people that might really piss them off. So um, yeah, so no audio input, which isn't which is which isn't which isn't ideal, but it's one of those things. The second thing um, that, that bugs me a little bit, but again, I know some people love it, is the screen. It is one of these articulating screens that sort of sits on one axis like that. And it kind of it kind of folds almost horizontally, which can be nice if you shoot in sort of low down and you want a nice uh, sort of, it, it is obviously better than having just a solid screen. So that, so I have to, I have to give credit where credit's due. But it would have been nice just to have a, a flip out. I don't think it cost, I don't think it probably took Panasonic too much to just stick some hinges on there. Um, um, because the G7 had it, so. Uh, but I'm, I'm being really, really picky, if I'm honest, because those are the, my, my only two gripes about it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I know it's not very sort of comprehensive, but a really, really nice camera to have. I pair this with the GH5 all the time and I absolutely love it. It's It costs less than £300 used. So, um, perfect. Perfect if you're on a budget and you want to shoot some really nice 4K footage. Mm -hmm.